Lying in a sleeping bag on the floor of my mum's house, a tear trickled down my cheek as I asked Allah for help. I was 25 and unmarried, but I had wanted to get married since I was 18. I felt really down every time I thought about it because it made me think about my value as a man and the small amount of progress I'd made so far in life. I wasn't really making money. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a business. What was I doing? And then when it came to marriage, I didn't have many potentials that could come through family means. So where was I going to find this person? My tears were tears of overwhelm. I had no idea how I was going to level up as a man. And even if I did that, I had no idea where I would find the right woman in a world full of feminist agendas. You hear it everywhere, right? I can't get married. I can't afford to get married. I can't find anyone. There's no one that fits my values. Yes, it is much harder to get married today than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago, but it is still very much possible to get married and have an amazing family with this one mindset. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Amin, a businessman based here in Istanbul and I wrote the book on Islamic masculinity. Let me tell you my story and what I learned about getting married the easy way. So the barriers of a normal Muslim man getting married are just building up and overlapping and building on top of each other. It's like a perfect storm of problems and barriers. I'm going to share with you how I overcame them, but first, what even are they so we know where we need to attack from? First is money. When it comes to money, the cost of living in general is higher than ever, of course. And on top of that, people are more materialistic and consumeristic than ever, which means they expect you and they want you to have a nicer house, a nicer car, more houses, more cars than ever before. They just put a higher and higher value on money and material things than the character of a person and the family setup. And instead of judging a man based on, yes, his wealth, but also his integrity, his principles, his deen, how much he stands by his word, what's known about his character, instead of these things coming together to be how people judge you, it's become a lot more based just on that number in your bank account. Of course, wanting some level of financial stability and wanting a man that you know can provide for you is one thing, but wanting a wealthy husband actually makes things a lot harder. On top of that, more and more girls have been taught that they should have their own place. They're not going to live with you and your parents, you and your family, which I believe is completely normal, but it's become a cultural norm now where I won't live with your parents. I want my own place, which puts more pressure on the financial side. And then with that materialistic worldview comes valuing their daughter based on the size of the wedding, how fancy the wedding was, and the mahar, which again puts the price of getting married up higher and higher. So if the mahar is low and the wedding is simple, then people will start saying, oh, what's wrong with so-and-so's daughter? Why did she not ask for a ridiculous amount? Now, this is the level that our culture has got to with some people. So basically, money is a big factor and it's actually become a big barrier to getting married in an easy way in 2023. Another big factor is culture. And I don't mean Pakistani culture, Egyptian culture. I don't mean that stuff. What I mean is simply you having one culture and the potential bride having a different culture and you not getting along. So back in the day, you might live in a village and there are all these different women in the village and your culture will be pretty much identical to her culture. What this means is that your expectations from a wife will be exactly what she expects she will have to do as a wife and what she expects a husband to do will be exactly what you expect you should be doing. And so you're completely on the same page when it comes to expectations. There'll be no disappointments, no confusion, no fighting over, I thought you should be doing this, and I thought I should be doing this, or I should get this. That would not exist. But now, even people living in the same exact city might have completely different values, expectations, and cultures around gender roles and what it means to live in a family, what it means to be married, what it means to be a husband or a wife or a mother or a father. And marrying someone that has different values to you is one of the biggest, fastest ways to have an extremely rocky, if not failed marriage. And I hear this all the time from brothers. I just can't find someone with the same values as me. Or I can't find someone who is family orientated like me. And of course, feminism throws another spanner in the works when it comes to getting married and establishing a harmonious family. And what I've realized is feminism really is individualism with a female branding attached to it. Listen to this. Think about some of the main ideas of today's feminism influenced women. Number one, you're a woman, so you're a queen 
and you should expect all these things. You have so much value just by default. Number two, you're an amazing woman. You're a queen and therefore there are no boundaries for you. There are no specific gender roles or roles in life. You can do whatever you want and you should be allowed to just do whatever you want. And number three, just focus on yourself. Don't rely on men. You need a career. You need an education. You need your own income. Now think of these three things. Are any of them compatible with a healthy family life? No. Because focusing on yourself in a family dynamic just doesn't work. So those, of course, are the problems and they create all sorts of mess in our societies. But what is the solution? Because there is one. So check this out. I wanted to get married from age 18. And I don't mean I just wanted to express myself and I was frustrated in that sense. I mean, I was actually ready to have a family, to get married and to eventually very soon have kids and have an actual family, have responsibilities going on. I had no problem with that side of things. The problem was that none of that happened until nine years later. It took me nine years to actually get married, subhanAllah. And that whole time in between, I think I was just being a loser. I was low confidence. I was in university wasting time. And even after I finished the degree, I would start another one just so I was doing something useful because I was so scared of getting into the nine to five rat race, the office life, the corporate life, and never getting out. And to be quite honest with you, my confidence was so low that I even doubted my ability to do these basic office jobs. But during this whole nine year period, I still, of course, wanted to get married. I just felt too useless and lacking confidence to actually go about doing it in a real practical way. And so that caused me to start putting women on pedestals and seeing them as kind of above me because I put myself down so low. I was looking at them thinking they offer the looks, they offer that feminine energy, that companionship, all the things I wanted. And what do I offer them? Nothing. That was my thinking. And to be honest with you, it was kind of true. Did I bring masculine energy? Did I bring leadership? Did I bring money to the table? No, I'm not just talking about money here. I'm talking about my own character. Was it a good character? But here is where everything changed and this is where the solution came in. As I mentioned in the beginning, I was sleeping on the floor of my mom's house because we didn't have enough beds to go around. So I was just sleeping on the floor. And after doing that for a few years while doing bits of jobs and learning and studying here and there, I decided to leave my mom, to move where I was living. I realized that motherly energy of always wanting to help me and support me and do whatever it takes to take any harm away from me was actually harming. May Allah bless my mother and protect her. But this is something I had to notice and realize for myself that at this point in my life, I don't need that kind of energy. I need more of that challenging fatherly energy. So I knew I had to leave. That setup was ultimately causing me to be dependent and passive and not challenge myself and get out of my comfort zone. So I knew I need to leave it, at least temporarily. So I did that. I left. I went to live somewhere else where I started to work on myself. I started to challenge myself to exercise a bit, to have a routine, to sleep early, to wake up early, to keep learning and to start building a business. Basically, I started trying to act like someone who I would look in the mirror and respect. And that did wonders for my confidence. I started to do things that I didn't feel comfortable doing, like applying for jobs and actually going to interviews and trying to blag my way through these things. I had zero corporate experience, office experience, marketing experience, but I was applying for jobs in marketing just based on what I was self-taught and I actually got offers for jobs. So when I accepted one of those offers and I got fired six weeks later, it didn't matter to me because it taught me two things that I can apply for jobs and get those jobs without having any experience. And number two, I'm actually better than a lot of these guys that are working in marketing departments in these office jobs. So I should actually have a bit more confidence in myself. And getting fired ultimately gave me the confidence to go and start my own business with a bit more oomph and put a bit more into it where I actually started to make real money. So the confidence and the fact that my business was starting to actually make money, that really helped me a lot. But the main change came from having more of an abundance mindset. And this directly came from trusting in Allah more, looking at Allah's plan for me and realizing that I don't know what's best for me. And ultimately, I only need one wife right now and I don't want to just marry any wife. So I started thinking quality is everything when it comes to your wife. So why am I going to feel desperate to just marry anyone? No, I need to be actually quite picky when it comes to this. And this comes back to trusting in Allah's plan for you. You know how it goes in the hard times. It becomes easier and easier to trust on Allah and just rely on him. And the crazy thing is, after getting the job and starting the business and getting some success with it, I actually was on a path in life without any wife. I was going somewhere with or without a wife. 
So when it came to getting married, I started thinking, I'm doing something with my life already. My life being fulfilled or not, feeling like I have a purpose or not, these things do not depend on you. These things do not depend on me getting married. I am a moving train and you can jump on if you see fit. But if you don't see fit, I'm going to my destination anyway. And once I developed this abundance mindset, it changed everything and I think it would actually make me a lot more attractive when it comes to getting married. Because I had that air of confidence, I had that confidence in my principles even. When it comes to me being very clear about what I want, what I don't want, what I can accept and can't accept, I was able to express that in a very confident and clear way because I was not scared of rejection whatsoever. I knew where I was going. The question is, does she wanna go in that direction as well? I just became a different man, I would say. I was confident, I was content with what Allah had already given me with or without a wife. And soon after that, Alhamdulillah, I married a woman who I had to make zero compromises for not only in her character and her values but even the way we got married was very simple the wedding was so simple and that's what i wanted and alhamdulillah allah gave that to me the mahar I was happy to pay that amount of mahra, it was all fine. All this is from Allah, but the number one thing that allowed me to get to that place is trusting in Allah and having the confidence that Allah can create a woman just to marry you. Allah can give you that abundance, but you must turn to Allah. You must have that gratitude already that, yeah, Allah, whatever you've given me already, without a wife, I'm happy for that. Yeah, Allah, I want to get married for your sake. And yeah, Allah, I know you can create anything. I know you can give me the best wife, so I don't need to go around compromising on my values and my principles to get married. I know that. So yeah, Allah, give me the best and trust Allah with those things and Allah will give you something special. So trusting in Allah is one thing, but also putting in the work and putting effort into becoming a good man in and of himself is important. And what are those traits and characteristics that you should be focusing on in order to get there? Well, watch this next video to find out exactly what they are.